my all-time favourite character that I need to see done right is Gambit. Because, oh, yes. <laughs> because I just love the concept of the guy that it was just literally, he threw playing cards that spontaneously combusted because he had the mutant ability to supercharge the potential energy and stuff. That was literally what he could do. But the guy that we got was um, also the actor that plays as Negative Man in the Doom Patrol series that I've been watching and I've been trying to get Jack to watch for a long time. And the thing is, this is one of these moments where I say it's not the actor's fault, it's the script's fault, because yeah. Mick Bromner was, is absolutely brilliant as Negative Man. But as Gambit, I just, oh, my heart sinks. It's just oh, so God. bad. It was just so awful. Oh. But the it, thing, plus, like in Origins, he weren't even bloody French. No, that's the one thing. Well, there's one of many things that have been missing from his character. But he wasn't French. He didn't have his dark red eyes, which really miffed me off. Because the whole reason why he is the way he is is because his mother abandoned him at birth because she was a devout Catholic and thought that his red eyes made him look like a demon baby, so she gave him up to the church or somebody, but the church didn't take him. It was a bandit of um, con artists in the um, area of Paris that's very known for con artists, and thus yeah. that's how he becomes who he is, because he's a con artist slash thief, and that's why he's so proficient at fighting, because he's been trained up by all these brilliant people. But yeah, we didn't get that with uh, X Men Origins. It was just a random dude that escaped a cell full of mutants, which shouldn't have been able to escape from, but yet he somehow oh, did. Because I don't think he he didn't even have his bow staff. He had a weird cane that made made him look like a tap dancer. Yeah, which again I thought was really crummy, but it's. One of those things I hope they can bring in because he yeah, would be a... I'm sh... yeah because I'm sure that people have like seen the gambit fan the gambit fan art floating about of Channing Tatum as Gambit. Uh, I'm not entirely convinced that he can do it. Don't get me wrong, he is a good actor, but the thing is, he's more of a guy that plays a big muscly dude than someone that sort of. What about Zac Efron? I don't know. I mean, it's hard to try and find someone to picture as Gambit because we need him to be French, but obviously anybody we pick won't be French. So it's trying they to... Un to have to be able to do a good accent. Yes, because while it seems easy to do a French accent, some actors aren't very good at doing accents. Like they can easily slip and end up making things sound a lot worse than what they are. Anna Paquin. Sorry? Anna Paquin. Yeah, exactly. Case in point. <laughs> yeah, Case in point. Basically, like that's gonna that's gonna be a hashtag. Don't do an Anna or don't do a Paquin. <laughs> yes. But the other thing as well is that we obviously have to have Professor X to make it as the X-Men team. But which actor though? Well as much as I would love it to be Patrick Stewart, one, he is I've, getting quite I've... old. I think it has to be McAvoy. Yeah, exactly. McAvoy did a brilliant job as a young Xavier. And it gives you more opportunity to see him excel as Xavier. Because other than First Class, I don't remember him doing an awful lot in the other movies. I mean, would you have Magneto in this one as well? Well, Michael Fassbender? Not for the first one, no. Yeah. I would leave it into perhaps the next film because we want to focus on the idea that mutants are an experiment, long running experiment. And then you can lead into the idea later on that some of them are loved and some of them aren't loved by the society. So it makes things a bit more of a political stance, which is where you get Magneto versus Xavier. Because the thing is, like, their rivalry isn't like good versus evil. It's more as a stance on 
I'm protecting my people, we deserve a voice, versus we have a voice, but we want to do it peacefully. So they want to, like, it's kind of like a play, it's kind of like a play on, um, because I think it was the like, was the inspiration from what Brian, like from Brian Singer did an interview saying it was basically the stances on basically portraying um, Professor X, Charles Xavier, as Martin Luther King, who did peaceful protests, and mm-hmm. then you had Malcolm X, who was like basically Magneto. Yeah, exactly. So it's more of a film that I think needs more dedication to to itself, other than it being a side note during the whole Mr. Sinister saga. Yeah. But to go on the idea of very obscure mutants and not very powerful or perhaps not very talented powers, I'd say Dazzler as well would be an interesting thing to bring in. Yeah. Because her ability was, well, as the name suggests, she can dazzle people with bright light. But I... In my opinion, her backstory is a very twisted one in itself. That I believe her powers were activated through drugs, unless I'm thinking wrong. Yeah, so sounds, it's a sounds, so, yeah. All of this, yeah. That, oh my god, that just reminded me of something. If any of you have never read this comic, thank God. You know, there was like basically very quickly, there was once a X Men who X Man X woman who was in the X Men who was only in one issue and she died in the same issue. Basically, she like she was able to create seismic waves, uh, seismic waves and explosions, that kind of thing. But the only way that she could get more powerful was the more she drank, the more powerful she got. So she was an alcoholic X Men. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, folks, is called Jane Genie, who we jokingly wanted to add to this movie, but it's sh- I think it's more of a character I'd love to see in Deadpool 3, just for the fact that it's such a dark... Just for the, and- sh- just for the fun of it. <laughs> yeah, but I'd also love to bring in Bishop, because we didn't... Oh. We've not seen a lot with Bishop. He was briefly used in Days of Future Past, but they never explained what his ability was or what his point was. Like he was just there to fill the gap of the racial card within the film, and that was it. Like yeah. the thing is with for, uh, with Bishop is that he essentially is a living battery and can power any weapon, and thus goes from there. So he always has some custom rifle attached into his chest or something. And that... just his weapons are awesome. Oh, it's... Bishop is probably the best black guy character for the mutants to have because it's just how diverse he is in terms of his weaponry, but how easily he can overcome somebody because he's just a living battery. Like, there is no way you can take him out unless you knock him unconscious. Exactly. So we have our sort of main roster of perhaps potential X-Men. We kind of want some of the originals like Storm and Kitty Pride because we have to bring in some better known characters. Although, but, with, although with Storm, at, at this point, like you brought this up, at this point, like during this film, isn't she married to... Oh, I can't remember his name. Black Panther. T'Challa. So, yeah. well, the theory is that obviously Black Panther 2 might bring in the idea of Storm. And it would be interesting to see them get married. But then at the same point, their marriage didn't last very long because of their feud with the X Men and other things like that. And. I don't know. It's a very interesting thing to bring in Storm because with her mutant ability, she was misguided or misseen as a goddess in Africa, which is how T'Challa came about finding her and they were childhood friends. But it's trying to work that within what we have already as a continuity is the part that I struggle with. Yeah, that's the hard bit. But We also want to try and add in, perhaps bring in the idea of Legion, which is the 
un well, he's not really unknown, but not very well known son of Xavier. He did have his own TV series. I tried watching it. I couldn't get my head around it. It was just, it was hard work to try and figure out what they were doing because they were trying to stay away from it being linked to the rest of the uh, Fox movies, despite the fact that it was on a Fox channel. They couldn't actually claim yeah, it yeah, as that works. Yeah, well, it was a really difficult thing to try and get my head around because season one made it out like he never knew he was a mutant and he randomly stumbles across these other mutants and they help him learn his abilities. Season two, it comes along that he's mastered those abilities and then it's revealed by the end of it that in actual fact that he was never good. He was actually a bad guy that had tricked everybody into believing that he was all sweet and innocent. And then by season three, it, it just thrown everything out the window and I just couldn't get my head around it. No. But let's have a look. What else have we got as a list of potential mutants? We, ah, yes, we were also thinking... No... <sighs> It's a very odd one when it comes to Magneto, is that he's had quite a few different kids by different people, but some have been debated as not his kids and some have been. Yeah. So, we all know that, ex well, for a long time we all knew that Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch are meant to be his twin children, and then I think it was either in the current run of the comics or in alternate reality... She somehow found she basically cursed them anybody that was a blood relative to hurt themselves, and it didn't work on Magneto, disproving the idea that Magneto was her dad. But we also have another female mutant that has been argued being Magneto's daughter, but I don't think they fully proved it, called Polaris. Yes. Who is also known as the Mystic Madam which I think could be an interesting potential point as a villain against Scarlet Witch. Yeah. But it's also trying to work it in because <sighs> Scarlet Witch is a very iffy character at best. And oh, yeah. the thing is, the best story she's had is where she's batshit crazy. Pardon me, French, but that's literally it. Like, you got House of M is all because of her flipping her lid. That's literally all House of M's all about. <laughs> but Scarlet Witch versus Polaris would be a really interesting scene to see. Yeah. But I don't know whether I'd want to see Polaris as older than uh, Scarlet Witch. So you could say that she was the firstborn child as like an illegitimate child to who would be Magneto, whoever it could be. Yeah. Or it could be that she was born some years after Scarlet Witch, but because of the whole snap and blip situation, they make her out to be similar age because she's aged up five years, if that makes sense. Yeah. Since we we're on this subject, actually, I remember, I just remembered something. Uh, I did come up with it. I don't. Sh I'm not quite sure it would work as it wasn't exactly Cyclops and Jean. I think it was a clone of either both yes. of them or one of them. Madeline two Pryor about the summer about the Summers children. Yes. So the Summers children is a very confusing mess, which <laughs> my head hurts as it is. So you start off with the clone of Jean Grey, Madeline Pryor, hooks up with Cyclops, who thinks it's Jean Grey but isn't Jean Grey, and you get. Uh, you you get Cable. So Cable is basically the future son of them two, and he has the optic blast of Cyclops, but he's also got the telekine telekinesis and telepathy of Jean Grey, but he's also got a techno-organic virus that suppresses most of his abilities, so that's why he looks half-machine. Yeah. But then you've also got... Two different daughters, they're in two different timelines, but uh, they're. I think Hope Summers is meant to be the legitimate daughter of Jean and Scott, 
Yeah. And then I think you've got Rachel Summers, who is meant to be the legitimate daughter of Wolverine and Jean, but I could be wrong. Yeah. But then you got Nathaniel Summers, who is technically Cable, but it's like an alternate re- version of Cable that doesn't get the techno-organic virus and basically looks like mutant Jesus. I will put the picture up later, <laughs> but it is literally mutant Jesus. There is a bit where he's literally wearing a robe. He's got long brown hair. He's glowing. And he's just like, oh, honestly, the pictures are hilarious. <laughs> but this is where, like, I'd love to see the next gen, like the children of some mutants. However, there are so many spawns of just one family. It's hard to grasp the fact of where where and how it all fits in yeah because the thing that i said to you is that you have nightcrawler who is the son of mystique and azazel and azazel's never been a mutant he is a demon so nightcrawler is part mutant yes but this is where my logic of this comes in where majority of offsprings from mutants have half and half powers if it's both a mutant and a mutant. That's why you've got Nathaniel Summers, a.k.a. Cable, has got the telekinesis telepathy of his mum, clone mum, but he's also got the optic blast of his dad. So, by logic, Nightcrawler should have the shape-shifting ability of his mum if he's able to siphon away the teleporting ability from his dad, who's not a mutant, but a demon. Yeah, except he's only got, except he's only got the blue scaly skin. Exactly. Because I remember in a series of X-Men Evolution, which was a quite good series, where he had a weird wrist device that allowed him to shapeshift, well, disguise himself as an average person because of his look, it made it difficult for people to trust him because he literally looks like a blue demon. Yeah. But... I would love to see more on the idea of the children of mutants. So perhaps, I mean, I mean even though you brought, even though you brought up um, James Hudson, what about Dakin? Yes, see, Dakin would be an interesting one, but I would make him more in the idea that instead of Although, him being bringing that up, would you be able to have like X twenty three in there as well? I don't know because X twenty three is not technically a ch- uh, the daughter of uh, Logan. She yeah, is. She's the... not technically the daughter. That's basically the female clone of himself. Yes, I mean you could bring her in at a later point, but I would age her up because despite the fact that we had a really great actress that played her in Logan, she was too young. She looked the perfect age yeah. to play as. I can't say this name with a straight face. Honey Badger. (laughs) For those of you who do not know, so with X-23, X-23 is the female clone of Logan because the point being that they only had the X chromosome of Wolverine. That's why she's female, because you need XY to be male and XX for female. So you got X-23... And then you've got multiple other clones that are younger versions of her that have been created as well. The youngest is called Honey Badger, which is the exact age group of the actress that we had in Logan, which I just love the code name Honey Badger because it sounds so non-threatening, but yet Honey Badgers are the most vicious creatures you can have. Yeah, so like maybe not X-23, but yeah, let's go back to Dakin. Could you bring in Dakin? I would bring him in purely for the fact that you can play on the idea that we ha- kind of had with Wolverine Origins that you got Sabretooth, who is the half brother that's a rival to Wolverine. Because yeah. Dakin is, ne- well, Dakin's never really a good guy. He's just a very bitter, dark, twisted son of Wolverine. Not even an anti hero, just. No. I'm not sure what you'd class him as. Psychopath? Yeah, dark. Yeah. I mean, 
The only thing that I do love about Dakin is the way his claws work aren't in the same yeah, traditional he's got sense. One that, comes, one that comes out of the wrist and the two that are like out of the sides. Yes. So it makes him more, in a sense, like a T Rex with the claws than an actual Wolverine. <laughs> <laughs> but it would be a great antagonist, in a sense, because at least then you get the idea that there are rivalries between the spawns of certain mutants not all of them live in harmony yeah but the other thing as well is there are other mutants that we wanted to think of maybe like morph or omega red pixie or risk or even spiral but the thing is it's all trying to justify how they're going to turn up in the MCU is the biggest issue we've had out of this. Because as I introduced it earlier on, the only way you can do it is that they were hidden from view, but it got undone due to the whole Thanos snap and the five-year blip. Yeah. But then... It's also trying to think of what else you can do with mutants that's not been done already. Because from the movies we've had before, they've always just been, we don't like you because you're different. You're being hunted down for your difference, which I can understand. But at the same point, it sort of falls flat when you think that these are like stupidly powerful people up against the average man who only have machine guns. Because I think it took them a second movie to realise that they need plastic guns against Magneto. Yeah. And yet, that makes no sense when you think that they knew Magneto's existed for the best part of 30 plus years. They could have made that for years ago. Yeah, or except, yeah, but except, is it in that same time, in that same timeline with X-Men 1, 2 and 3, that, is that still in that timeline's continuity that he killed the president? Or that I no, don't... But he was trying to save the president. Was that in the same? No, oh, it's I... confusing. I think Days of Future Past undid that because it's like, it's because he was in the uh, in the Pentagon prison. Yeah, so I think Days of Future Past undid all that because the argument was that everything spawned from the moment that Mystique shot Trask. Trask. So from there onwards, it all snowballed. But, because by the end of the movie, obviously, Logan wakes up in the mansion and is like, what the hell's this? So, it must mean that the mansion never got blew up anyway. Uh... So, that, so, that mean, so, that mean, like, for 2023, obviously, like, when the snap is undone and everything, which would, which would mean if that happened, then maybe the, regardless, the Westchester incident would have still happened. Hmm. I don't know. I mean, I love the idea. I don't know if it was in Deadpool 1 or Deadpool 2 where they jokingly say that the mansion gets blown up all the time or something, which is fair enough because let's face it, the X mansion does get blown up a lot. Yeah. But it's trying to. It's trying to understand their place within the Marvel Universe, because the other thing as well is that the Civil War comic was all based around the idea mutants were unstable, which caused the whole debate between Cap and Iron Man that they had to be registered. Now, obviously, we can't have Civil War again because there's no more Iron Man and there's no more Captain America. Yes. But it's there also trying... something else, though. <laughs> Well, what's the something else? What can we try and do for this? Well, it's just, uh, I'm not sure if it was the exact plot that you spoke about, but you spoke of doing uh, something similar, like what happened with Secret Wars. So the idea of what, that we got various teams of people pinned against each other via the Beyonder? Yeah, but then that would mean you would have to introduce the Fantastic Four. Yes, which is going to be a video for a later point because we still haven't got our heads around that either. Yeah. But mutants as a whole, 
I don't know whether they could easily play on the idea that they've done for the moment in the comics where they've made an island nation, which would be an interesting deve uh, development for the mutants, that you'd have like a whole island full of them living in harmony that's hidden from the rest of the world. I just, I don't know, because I still find it difficult to... To try and add in all these random people that have so many abilities that have somehow hidden from society for so long. Yeah, this is the hard bit. I, at the end of the day, I don't think anybody's going to be happy with what we actually get as the MCU. Oh, no, oh, no, 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 definitely not. We, we, can come, we can come up with every kind of theory and suggestion until we're blue in the face, but we're still not going to be happy. No. But at the end of the day, I I still think that the best antagonist, if it were like a trilogy of movies for the mutants, that it would have to be Mr. Sinister behind the scenes of, course, of everything. Yeah, of course, yeah. But it's also trying to figure out whether he could have his claws in other secret programs, like perhaps the advanced idea mechanics and other random scientific uh, regimes within Marvel. Yeah, so you kind of had that whole kind of we had like the Easter we had the Easter egg idea, which was you know him being like the Howlett's uh, doctor. He was there in the background, although we never saw him. You had the cat, cat when you had um, Steve Rogers go through like the whole transformation and turn into Captain America. He was there in the background and like lots of other things that like, he was always there in the background whenever it had anything to do with like genetics or tampering with genetics exactly but for all these mutants it's going to be interesting regardless as to how many mutants they use because there are at least 200 plus different mutants in the whole of the marvel universe and yet we've only ever seen what five percent of them yeah exactly like it's such a low number we've seen i mean the other thing as well is we did finally see in deadpool 2 a better version of the juggernaut like that massive version of juggernaut like, that's that how he should be the juggernaut. but again this is a character that's not actually mutant he is something else entirely which ties slightly into doctor strange so he in the Infinity War, you got the battle of Doctor Strange, Iron Man, Spider Man, and the Guardians versus Thanos. There's a brief scene where you got Doctor Strange using these random red strips from his hands that try to grab the gauntlet. Yeah, that is a magic spell known as the Crimson Bands of Sitarak, which is <coughs> tied to oh. bless you, which is tied to a demonic being known as Sitarak, who has a crimson gem that imbues anyone he chooses to be the Juggernaut. So the Juggernaut is actually the half-brother of Charles Xavier, and it's because of them two excavating the tomb that he gets crimson jewel and becomes the Juggernaut because he survives the cave-in. And the cave-in is actually what also made Charles Xavier paralysed in the original comic. Mm-hmm. Which I don't know whether to use that or not, only because uh, making Xavier paralyzes it has to happen. But it's oh yeah. I mean, I didn't really like the way that they did it during first class, that he was just yeah, so shot in the yeah, spine. Like, yeah, just it just seemed so I I know it sounds really stupid to say this, but it just seemed really like is that it? Well, I mean, the thing is as well is that Magneto stopped the bullet because he managed to get the bullet out of him, so it shouldn't have technically penetrated. Because no, I'm sorry, I know that Magneto is like ability of be like bending metal and stuff, but the speed in which a bullet moves is a lot quicker than the human mind. So unless he's got like super speed as well as magnetism, I don't understand how he was able to get the bullet out. And then it was also, it did more harm than, uh, yeah, it was a bit of a fuzzy issue. Yes. But 
Is there anything else you want to add to this before we finish? Well, I well, I think we've got to wrap it up soon. We've been going up for an hour and two minutes, but there could be much more to come. I'm just glad that we got like the bulk of this out of the way and done. Yes. So I think this is pretty much it for today. Me and Jack ranting as usual. So I think you're going to have to look out for a part two. Yeah, part two would probably be us at least listing a few more people that we potentially want to be the certain characters, or at the very least, at least trying to bring in the idea of their origins, who's going to appear where. So, yeah, that's pretty much it this week, folks. Thanks again for joining us. It's a long episode, as usual, because we just rant, rave, and ramble. But this is what we do. So, again, stay safe, folks. Stay home, and we shall catch you all soon. See you later. See you later.